Hello everyone. Happy December. How did that happen? How is it the last month of the year already? Where did the year go? The, Chris the, the tree's up, the Christmas decorations are up, the Christmas mug is out and it's, it's somehow December and nearly next year. <laughs> Honestly, my first clue that the year was coming to the end is that I started putting books on my TBR that had a 2024 release date. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to do something I've never done before, which is a most eagerly anticipated releases video. And I tend, I'm going to admit, I tend not to keep uh, sort of up to date with release, book release news. I don't read many series, so there's not usually like a sequel that I'm eagerly anticipating, unless there's sort of very, a few, few, few small cases, but usually it's not something I pay attention to. Um, and yeah, I, I tend to sort of read books as I come across them. But this year I had a few books on my TBR that are coming out next year, so I thought I would tell you about them now in a most eagerly anticipated releases video. Some of these I already have on NetGalley and I can't wait to read. They might actually be read in 2023, even though they're not being released until 2024. But every single one is one that I am so, so hyped for and would be on my pre-order list. If it's not already, it would be on my pre-order list if I hadn't got it off NetGalley. They're all books I'm so, so excited for. There are a couple of re-releases or international releases here, but I thought I would include them in this list as well. So without any further ado, let's talk about some books that are coming out in 2024. So any long, long, long time subscribers, and I think there's about 30 of you, <laughs> if you're still here, who have been watching my videos from the very start, will remember that in 2021, my best book of the year was Sister Song by Lucy Holland. And the sound I made <laughs> when I found out she had a new book coming out was inhuman. It really, really was. I have never requested anything so fast off NetGalley. Uh, and when I got approved, I did a little dance party in my car when the email came through. I, I didn't check my phone while driving, obviously I parked and yeah. Anyway, anyway, oh, I'm so excited. So, Song of the Huntress by Lucy Holland. So her previous book, we're talking Dark Ages, mythology and legend retold with a sort of feminist and queer angle that just like brings the whole thing to life and was so powerful and moving and it was so good. And Song of the Huntress is coming out as well. This one comes out in March. I cannot wait to get to it. It's set in ancient Britain, like I think 60 AD it says on the blurb um, and I think it's a sapphic romance and it's fantasy and it's based on mythology and oh I'm so excited this is not the last mythology book that you will see on this list um, it is probably my most anticipated read of next year already um, I've been eagerly awaiting another book from Lucy Holland for a while now and I am so excited that it is here Another one that I can't quite believe I have got off NetGalley is Mary the First Queen of Sorrows by Alison Weir. This one doesn't come out till May and the cover hasn't even been released yet, but I am so excited. It is no secret that I love Alison Weir. She's on a roll with historical fiction at the moment and I've read all of her six Tudor Queens books. I've read the other two uh, Tudor Monarchs books, so the one about Elizabeth of York, the one about Henry VIII, and now we have one about Mary I, who I wouldn't say she's an underrated Tudor, I think she earned her reputation, um, but I think she, you know, there's a lot to be said about her life, uh, and she's often, her story isn't regularly told as much as her sister's Elizabeth I is, so can't wait, I'm so excited. Again, it doesn't come out to me, but I've got it. I've got it on my Kindle from NetGalley and I cannot wait to read it. Speaking of Elizabeth I and sticking with the Tudor theme, the next one on the list is, and I'm going to try and get the title right, Young Elizabeth, Princess, Prisoner, Queen by Nicola Tallis. This is a non-fiction book about young Elizabeth I. I do have, I can't remember its title and I can't see it on my shelf immediately to tell you the title, um, another book by David Starkey about um, Elizabeth I as a young woman that I have not read yet. Maybe I'll do 
read them in tandem and one after the other, see how they compare. Um, and I have read Nicola Tallis's book about Margaret Beaufort and I did enjoy it. It wasn't like one of my favourite Tudor books that I've read, but I did really enjoy it. But when I saw she had a book about Elizabeth I, of course, I had to request it. I'm part of the problem. Let's be real. I'm part of the problem as to the absolute insane amount of Elizabeth I material there is out there. And I'm okay with that. I don't want to sp delve too deep into it in this video. I think I'll talk about it in depth in another video. There is a lot of... Debate is not quite the right word. Discussion about elements of Elizabeth I's childhood, um, which through a modern lens are viewed very differently as they were through a contemporary lens and whether or not we should let, take that into account when we think about her character, for instance. Um, so I'm intrigued to see what Nicola Tallis's approach is. I think it's going to be a really refreshing and interesting one to see a very modern author who's very much about centering female stories through history. See her take as opposed to uh, the more traditional view, by which I mean the more patriarchal view. I did say we would be returning to mythology, uh, and this again is not the last mythological book on this list, but this one is a non-fiction book about mythology and it's an inkling, of course it's an inkling if you saw my reading vlog a couple of weeks ago where I read lots of teeny tiny non-fiction books. And this one is called, and I'm going to get the title right, I'm going to look at it to make sure I get the title right, All the Violet Tiaras, Queering the Greek Myths by Jean Menzies. I have been watching Jean's videos for years and she, one of her recommendations, introduced me to the Inklings and so of course I had to read this one because it's about queering Greek myths. <laughs> it's, it's basically written for me. That's, that's the vibe. So hopefully it'll be arriving in the post in January. Um, hopefully to the correct address because um, I forgot to tell them I moved house. So I had to go back to my old house to get the last one. Hopefully it'll <laughs> arrive at the correct address. And I can't wait. I can't wait to read it. It just, just the title, I am 100% sold. I did mention there is in fact a re-release on this list and that is Waiting for the Flood by Alexis Hall. Now I love Alexis Hall. This is no secret. I talk about his books all the time. I'm obsessed with his books and he, one of his old series is being re-released with additional material. Um, I have Glitterland. I haven't read it yet. I'm going to read it before I read Waiting for the Flood. Um, but yes, Alexis Hall every single time. I can't wait. I haven't really had time to delve into his back catalogue. The first book of his I read was Boyfriend Material and although I've kept up with his new releases since then, I haven't gone back to read his older books. So I'm glad that these are kind of getting re-released and get a little little reason, a little excuse for me to, to get stuck in because it's going to boost my net galley percentage, so it's fine. Another author by author who I talk about all the time is Lex Croucher and they have a new historical fiction coming out next year. It's a sapphic retelling of Robin Hood called Not for the Faint of Heart. I don't think I need to say any more. That, that's all anyone needs to know. I will be reading it. I will love it. End of segment. And finally is an international release. So this book was released in Australia this year in the summer. I saw, I kept seeing it on Twitter, I was so excited to read it, but it was only being released in Australia. So I bought it through Book Depository and then Book Depository closed down before it was released, so I never got it. But it is getting a UK release next year, so I finally get to read Orphea and Eurydice by Elise John. The Orpheus myth holds a special place in my heart um, and I kept seeing about this book that was gender flipped and they're both queer and just kind of explores gender and queerness through the story and I, I mean, I was sold, of course, I was sold, I'm completely obsessed, I can't wait to read it and I'm just so glad I will finally get to have a copy because I've been wanting to read this for so long and have not been able to get my hands on a copy without having to pay extortionate shipping from Australia. So I'm so excited. I cannot wait to read it. So there we have it. My most anticipated releases for 2024. Let me know if you are excited for any of these. What are your most anticipated releases of next year? And give this video a like if you enjoyed it. 
subscribe if you'd like to see more and I will see you very soon. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time. Ta-ra for now. That was a terrible outro.